How to make a Rohan Watchtower. Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery. I'll be showing how I made this exact Rohan Watchtower in this video. So you don't have to do this, but I made the palustrade parts out of sprues. So I took old sprues, I snipped off all of the snivelly bits at the side, and then cut myself down lengths that are about an inch, then used a sharp knife to kind of cut into them to make them all at jaunty angles, making sure I had a nice spike at the top. And I made a lot of these, and I mean a lot, a lot of these. I'd recommend that if you're going to do this, you don't use sprues, you use something more like cocktail sticks, or you can use dowels or bamboo sticks. There's going to be a link in the comments for that. But once you um, have got lots of them, I took some masking tape and laid it out in a, a strip so that the uh, sticky side was up. I made three inch lengths like this, and then I took a three inch length of the sprues and then stuck it on top like this. Nice and simple so far. Just a little bit time consuming. And the great thing about the masking tape thing is, is that you can reach underneath it like this and then you can squeeze in anywhere that uh, might not have got um, attached by the glue. You're also going to need some ones that are about an inch long as well. So three three inch ones and two one inch ones. And you have to do exactly the same thing with the one inch ones. So you're going to have those sides set up. Next I took a bit of XBS foam and I made a slightly strange shape. It's an octagon where the long sides of it are, well, there's four long sides, which are three inches, and then the kind of corner sides are one centimetre. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute if that's a little bit confusing. But uh, essentially, it's a larger square with the corners just kind of taken to 45 degrees like that. So three inches on the long bits and just one centimetre is just under um, half an inch on the short bit. Once I'd done that, I needed to make it actually look like a wood. So I took a wire brush and I've scraped it across the surface of this. You'll be seeing this in a number of different places on the video. And I've also got a whole video about how to make XPS foam look like wood. Once I'd got the grain into the wood, I then scored some lines with a pen. You can use a knife. For wood planks, it's better to use a biro. And then I added some sideways marks as well and some vertical ones on the sides so they all started to look a little bit more like it was made out of planks. And that's what it ended up looking like. Next up was the tricky bit. I drew myself a three and a half inch tall thing, which then went into a curve and then round into a, that's supposed to be a horse's head. I'm not the best at drawing, but that is what I ended up drawing. And I was relatively happy with it. Next, I uh, stuck that to some XPS foam and then went over the lines really firmly with a pen. Exactly the same pen I used earlier, in fact. And I went over that quite firmly until the design was clearly visible on the, uh, in the actual foam. From here, it was time to cut it out. Now, I'm lucky enough to own a uh, Proxon X or a hot foam cutter, so um, I went round this nice and slowly, nice and carefully, but you could also do this just as well with a knife it would just take a little bit longer, but if you're gonna do any level of craft, then I recommend uh, picking up one of these or a cheaper version of it. Uh, but this is what I ended up with, this kind of pretty cool shape that, uh, you know, I'm not very artistically talented, but I was able to come up with this and I think it looks all right. Uh, and then I, I did this in two centimeter foam, knowing that I had the ability to just cut it in half lengthways so that I had two one centimeter ones. And here they are. I might be making clippity clop noises at that point, but I was pretty happy with how they came out. Next up, it's important to sand these because there's gonna be some weird edges on them. And also some of the uh, shiny edges don't take paint so well. And then it was time to brush their hair. I mean, put some wood grain on them just exactly in the same way, except I didn't, on the horse's head itself, I didn't actually put any wood grain in. What I did do was just kind of roughly draw in some horse-like details, like an eye and a bit of mane and stuff like that. And then I used a sharp knife to kind of cut some of these details out, just to give it a little bit more life and a little bit more shape. Um, this only took like five minutes for each one, and I think it was well worth the effort. That's what it ended up looking like. Next up was to paint everything, nothing particularly difficult here, just cheap brown paint and covering the entire thing with it. So everything, both sides of everything, the horses, the palustrades, I think I undercoated the palustrades first in a wraith bone, um, but everything got covered in this paint. Uh, nothing particular or interesting to tell you here other than I painted the brown. Uh, and then I painted the uh, 
horsey bits brown. I really should have a better name than horsey bits for them, but that's what I'm calling them, the horsey bits. Because you know what I'm talking about then. So making sure we get into all of the details, I think I did end up giving them a couple of coats, or one coat, and then kind of touching them up a little bit. Then to really bring these to life, it was important to dry brush them. So I took some bone colored paint and then you take off the most of the excess and then stroking at 90 degrees, so perpendicular to your thing. You can show how quickly this detail can come up. This is going over it for less than a minute. So or anything wood grain going over it in, um, in this kind of uh, bone colored paint. And then for the horse heads, I actually went like I was actually painting it. I mean, not, not really properly painting it, but a much heavier dry brush to bring out a kind of a, a, like it's been painted rather than it just being kind of weathered. Next up was to attach the floor to the horsey bits. So I got a model to gauge the height and then made a mark. And then I made sure that mark was at exactly the same height on every single bit so that it was level. I have to apologize for the angle on this because I didn't really do a particularly good job of filming it. But all I've done is add a little bit of super glue to the uh, the shorter side, and then I've added that to the, uh, the horsey bit at the point that it was marked. Then I did the same with the next one. Add a little bit of super glue to the corner, and then putting it there. And it literally attach attaches itself in seconds. And I mean seconds, less than five seconds. There you go. As soon as you pick it up, it's, it's attached there. Did a bit better with this one. You can actually see what I'm doing now. A little bit of super glue there, and then sticking on one of the horsey bits, making sure that the horse is curving to the inside. Well, that's how I did mine. You can do yours however you want to. And then I got the fourth one on as well. So as long as you get them all on at the same height, you're doing a good job. Now I wanted to attach the railings. Now you're seeing the third one being attached because I did an even worse job of uh, getting the first and second one in shot. So, but all I did was put some super glue along the edge and then brought the rail, which was uh, going across and then making sure that that kind of lined up. You'll notice that I didn't even attempt to try and get the tops and levels. I in fact wanted the uh, the spikes to be all at different levels and all of these. And then came, I completely, I mean, I'm, I didn't do the best job of filming this, I do apologize, but uh, I completely forgot to uh, point the camera when I was making these bits. But I had one long cross bit like this, and that went diagonally across, because at the moment that structure would not be strong. So I put one across like that, and then squeezing at the ends and pushing down slightly, um, that joined up nicely there. And then I had another two bits which braced between that bit and the other corners. So essentially forming a cross. The other bits are diagonals. Now I, to, to make these, I suggest that you make a triangle shape to fit between the upright and the bit it's gonna be attaching to, and then cutting it so that you know, you're cutting a smaller triangle off of it, and you'll be left with a beam that has the perfect angles to be uh, connecting between the upright and the bit it is supporting. And to attach these, once again, I am just using super glue and it's really, really quick to go and that is the whole thing completed. And there we have it, a Rohan watchtower with horsey detail and some palustrades as well. And this is what it looks like with some uh, watches of Karna with maybe some orcs being a little bit annoying towards them. And this is what it looks like as part of the entire Edorast outpost that I have made. Tutorials for which will be out on the channel very soon, so please subscribe. If you've liked this, then please like it, and please leave any comments. If you have any questions about it, then do not hesitate to ask.